Carefully read each problem before writing your answer. A security code is made up of three letters, A through Z, followed by two numbers, 0 through 9. Numbers and letters can be repeated within the code. How many possible combinations can be made? Reading the problem carefully, I noticed that the three letters and the two numbers may be repeated within the code. That's important to realize. When that's the situation, I'm going to use what I like to call the slots method. I'm going to create slots or placeholders for the three letters. I'm going to label letter, 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 followed by two numbers. Number, number. Now, how many letters are available to place in the first slot? A through Z, there's 26 letters. Repetition is allowed, so all 26 are available to use for the second slot. So there's 26 also, and 26 for the third. How many total numbers are available? Well, there's 10 digits, 0 through 9. And since I can repeat the numbers, all 10 are available for the second number choice. When you want to compute this, you're going to multiply these numbers together. So it's going to be 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10. The answer is going to be 1,757,600 ways. A square with an area of 36 square units is drawn in quadrant 2 of a coordinate grid. One of the vertices is at the origin. What is the x-coordinate of the vertex farthest from the origin? The first step is to actually draw the square. It needs to have an area of 36 units. It's located in quadrant 2, and a vertex is located at the origin, right there. How can we do the square? Well, if the area is 36 units, the area of a square is just side square, or side times side. So you would have the length of each side is going to be 6. So we're going to go 6 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, that's one vertex. Two, three, four, five, six. There's another. And then here's the fourth point. Let's go ahead and connect the dots. Now that we have our square, what's the question you're being asked? You want to find the x-coordinate of the vertex that is farthest away from the origin. No, it's not that one. What about these two? They're the same distance, they're six away, but the quarter point or vertex that's diagonally opposite the origin has the longest distance. So what's going to be the x-coordinate of this point? Well, it's going to be negative one, two, three, four, five, six. It's located at negative six. That's what you're going to write down as a final answer. Here are some reminders for when you are completing this extended constructive response task. Carefully read each part of the task before writing your response. Be sure to complete all parts of the task. Clearly explain your answer and show all your work.
Jerry was given $125 as a birthday gift from a few of his relatives. He wants to use the money to buy some new baseball equipment. He has already selected a bat which costs $45.95 and a glove which costs $39.95. These items are subject to a sales tax of 7%. Use the above information to complete the following. After purchasing the bat and the glove, would Jerry have enough money left over to buy a helmet which costs $32.50? Show all work and explain your answer. Note, the helmet is also subject to the sales tax. We know that Jerry starts off with $125. He buys a bat for $45.95 and a glove for $39.95. So how much has he spent so far? Well, let's go ahead and add these up. We're going to get $85.90. But this is before tax. We have to add to this a 7% sales tax. How do we do that? Well, first let's compute the tax by multiplying this value by the 7%. But whenever we deal with percentages, we should convert to decimal. So I'm going to multiply by 0 0.07. When you do that, you're going to get 6.013. So costs, including sales tax, be as follows. We have $85.90 plus this value, but we need to round to the nearest penny. So we have $6.01. That's going to equal $91.91. This is the money he has spent so far. Our next step is to figure out how much money he has left. We know that he has so far spent $91.91. He started off with $125. So let's go ahead and subtract the amount we just figured out. When you do that, you're going to get $33.09. And then the big question is, is that enough to buy the helmet? Well, the helmet costs $32.50, so it seems to be okay, but wait. This is without tax. Mm. So we need to add the sales tax for this item. Let's do that. So like before, we're going to multiply this by the 7%, which we need to convert to decimal. When you perform this multiplication, you're going to get $2.28. Therefore, you can write down cost of helmet with tax with so let's go ahead and add these numbers up. 32.50 plus 2.28. When you add those up, you're going to get $34.78. And then at this point, you need to write down that you can conclude no. Jerry does not have enough money to get the helmet since the helmet with tax costs $34.78, but he only has $33.09 to spend.